<laughs> okay, we are we are rolling. We are rolling. I'm just tra- checking out the questions because that is what this episode is all about. Fan listeners questions. Fan questions yes. or listener questions. It could also be just questions from from people who's not fans, so then I'll just say listeners questions. Let's just call it a Q&A. A Q&A session. So it's been a long time guys, but um since we it's been a long time since we've done these uh Q and A's. Um, in the beginning, it was a current theme in on the podcast that we all always try to answer a few questions, but we haven't done it uh, in a long time. I guess mainly because there's been so many relevant topics going on, so it's it's been quite easy for us to find interesting stuff to talk about. Yeah, I haven't thought about it at all when we have done the other episodes no, that we no, exactly. we missed it in any way. But no, we'll make up for it today and answer a lot of questions. Definitely. But before we get into that. Welcome back to the Bamton Experience. Thank you so much for for tuning in, watching or listening. Um, yeah, it means a lot to us. And thanks for all the questions that we have received since uh, my Instagram post a few days ago. Um, it's been great. Thank you so much, guys, for the support. Overall, I think that, I mean, the, the, the people watching has been very kind to us. Yeah, definitely. The feedback has been great. And I think I've also done a good job. So it's, it's yeah. only fair. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Yeah. You you have been amazing. So <laughs> yeah. um, no, it's been it's been great, and I think uh, also like the the viewing and listening and numbers are, are rapid, are growing like steadily all mm-hmm. the time. So yeah, it's moving in the right direction for sure. Um, and also all, all the, the 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 comments is is primarily just positive and mm. giving us good yeah. feedback. So, but there are also a few haters every now and then yeah but that's but necessary that's, that is necessary that's definitely necessary uh we might actually need a little bit more haters yeah okay so we need to say something controversial <laughs> today <laughs> that, no. that's for you to do <clears throat> okay yeah, yeah i'll try to see if i can come up with something yeah but first of all before we get into the questions can you just uh can you just uh, clarify why were you so horrible in in today's morning practice because we just came from practice a few few hours ago, and Hans Christian was, I mean, I haven't seen worse, to be honest. I have been worse for sure. You, you just have? yeah, you just forget easily. But it's uh, I'll mainly blame Vincent actually. Your son. Yeah, my son, because he was having a really bad night. Yeah. So I didn't sleep very well, and I'm also struggling with my hamstring a little bit, mm. uh, and I also don't get inspired from training with you and Gemke. No. Oh. It makes sense. Yeah, I'm, I'm more used to being on court with like Ditlio and <laughs> Victor Svensson yeah. and Mauna, so I prefer yeah. that. A lot of good excuses. We just mm-hmm. talked about prior to this episode that all three of us, me, you, and Oliver, had a had a horrible night. Yeah. I couldn't sleep it's at quite all. A coincidence. I couldn't sleep at all. I was just walking around in the apartment. Um, you were walking. Around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave okay. up at some point, oh, and nice. then just I just at what time? Um, like one or something. Okay. So I also slept. I mean, I had a horrible night. So, so and how, I, how long did you walk around for? <laughs> no, no, not much. I mean, <laughs> okay, okay. Just went to the kitchen, opened the, opened the, um, the fridge, the fridge, and then closed it again, and then just, I mean, yeah, okay. all right. Just checking out the different rooms and in, in well, the apartment that I haven't <laughs> um, put furniture in. So that's basically yet, every so. single room. Yeah, no, 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 not every single. All but right. <clears throat> no. So when did you go to sleep? I think I slept a l- little bit after that, so a little oh, bit God. after. And we had training at eight thirty, so that was quite early. Yeah, so um, so it it was a tough night. That's also one of my excuses. I hate the early practices. You do? Yeah, my body is not working as well. After nine is fine. So that's why I'm also going to skip training tomorrow. That's eight o'clock. <laughs> so usually we guys, if you if you wonder, we we practice between eight and ten or ten and twelve. I, I would prefer nine to nine to eleven. S- someone ringing on the doorbell? No, no, but just close the door after you. I don't know who. Maybe it is. it's a special guest, surprise guest. I'm buying so much furniture these days, so <laughs> maybe it's a a chair or something arriving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, but uh, I just wanted to to sh- to. I don't want to. <sighs> wow. Wow. I think it's a bad excuse that you were horrible today because of your sleep because I didn't sleep well yeah. either and I was much better than you if but, I have to say but you are also much better than me like ah, you're like 20 heads. places higher than me in the rankings mm. but I don't know I have no good explanation I was just shit 
Yeah. My uh, yeah. I've already said everything I can say about it. I was just bad. But I agree. I agree with your point on the early practices. Mm. I think eight and eight to ten doesn't suit me very well either. I think nine to huh? eleven would be perfect. Oh, there was someone here to ask if we parked our car illegally. But we didn't. Not us. Not us. We didn't. Okay, Hans Christian. Yeah. Um, let's get into some listeners' questions, and I know that you have been going through them or not. Yeah, most of them. We but actually uh, we actually we agreed on that we shouldn't. I mean, read them prior to the episode. We just wanted to to read them up. Yeah. I mean, spontaneously. Spontaneously. Uh, and and I have found a few a few quick fire ones to start off. Yeah. Just some easy ones, and actually one of them is very popular question. It's very simple. At what age did you start playing badminton? Oh, that's a classic. Yeah, it is a classic. I think we can... We can go we, through it quickly. <laughs> yeah, we can. So, I think I officially started on like a team team practice when I was like six years old. Five for me. But I mean, my parents, my, my father uh, is, is working in a badminton club, Aarhus Badminton Club, mm. where, I, where I grew up. Mm. Um, so, I've always been playing, I mean, since I was able to hold a racket basically mm. so but officially on, on 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 like a team training six i'm actually starting vincent in one week on saturday he starts his first badminton practice and how old is he he's turning four at the end of this month <sighs> that's very so he's early. actually only still three yeah what about and i'm gonna be one of the coaches you are yeah where, where? every saturday in valensbeck my uh, hometown okay. is he playing yeah. anything else is he playing football he's already a football player Yes. What would you prefer for him to become a bouncer player or a football player? Tennis. Tennis? Yeah, he's going to try that as well. Is he? Yeah, yeah. Not, not yet, but he will. The The city we live in has a, a quite good tennis club. Denmark doesn't really have a, a very rich history of great tennis players. No. We have Karolina Wozniacki and... Uh, no, we have Clara Tauten, who is yeah. top 30. Ooh, Oliver. We, we Please behave. Lost his phone. We have some... some some young young guns coming up, Klaus yeah. Hausen and uh, Holger Rune. Yeah. yeah, top 100 in the ATP rankings now. Okay. Oh. Yeah. yeah, so See. yeah, that's... Uh, we that, haven't that's cracked it. the code in tennis yet. No. Maybe. No. Maybe not. Next quick one. How tall are we? I am 1 meter and 86 centimeters. And I'm 180. You haven't picked the best questions here. No, that was just beginning. to get started. <laughs> now I have a long one for you. Oof. And you need to think. Okay. You have to build your perfect badminton player in men's singles and in women's singles. So for the men's singles, you can only choose uh, from uh, other men's singles players. And there's six categories. Speed, athleticism, power, stroke play, intelligence, and precision. Okay. Uh, is I already did this already for did BWF, this. Yeah. Uh, where mm. I actually chose a women's singles player because it didn't have to be specifically men or women. But okay. now there was one guy who wanted specifically one for men's singles and one for women's singles. Okay, <clears throat> so for speed, you have chosen. Is this yours? Yeah, that, that is mine. This is your that player. Is so in yeah. speed, you you choose uh, Anthony Ginsing. Athleticism, you chose Cheng Long. Mm -hmm. Power, you chose Victor Eklesen. Stroke play. Is that like just overall technique? And yeah, that's how I in interpreted okay. it. Yeah. There you chose Tai Su Ying. Yeah. Intelligence. Yeah. You chose me. Yeah. Yeah. Bad mistake. <laughs> Precision. <laughs> you chose Kento Momota. Yeah. And I only picked from players who were active. Okay. And I, I think it's more fun to do it that way. So it's a very good player that you have put together here. It is. It is. I not not so intelligent, but pretty good player. <laughs> I would say speed. I would also choose either Genting or Kian. But you can only low, choose one. Low, low Kian. Yeah. We talked about this a few episodes yeah, ago. Did. If Kian was e maybe even faster than Genting, but mm. it's also in different in different movements. I mm. think Kian is is faster in his defense, and I think Genting is faster. I mean, coming from the baseline to the net. Yeah. So, for instance, after a smash and then going to kill it on the net. I think I would choose low. All right. Low from Singapore. Yeah. 
Sorry, Genting. Um, You're not bros anymore. <laughs> athleticism. Athleticism. I also feel like low is a, is a quite good choice. Mm. Um, they, ha, some of the the dives that he did during the World Championships were ridiculous. Yeah. And the way that he got up afterwards was insane. So I did mine before Lowe really uh, made mm, his breakthrough. Before it blew up. So I, I didn't even consider him in any of the categories, actually, no. at that time. Athleticism. <sighs> I would also choose Lowe, to, yeah. Lowe, to oh, be honest. Yeah, yeah. Power. I, I I can only choose men single and yeah. women single players. Yeah. Power, I would choose... Uh, Victor too, like you did. Yeah, not Lee Shijia. Yeah. Mm. That was the two players that I was. Uh, yeah, it's between those two yeah. for sure. Victor and Lee Shijia is, I mean, the most powerful players in, not only in their smash but also just in their arm in general. Mm. I mean, in the defense, I mean, like very strong arm to to f- flick it cross court and stuff. Yeah. Stroke play. Oh, that's a difficult one. It's a very difficult one. Yeah, it's a tougher question, this one. Stroke play. Could it be yourself? <laughs> you can choose yourself, or are you yeah. saving yourself for the intelligence part? I mean, <laughs> I'm definitely going to have myself in there <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> I just need to figure out where. I think stroke play, oh, it's... Hmm, what about a guy like... Uh, like... Uh, Sui Wang. Hmm, yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking about Sui Wang because he is he has a different technique. Mm-hmm. I mean, but he can hit some insane shots every now and then. Yeah, he can. I but think But maybe not as the like top top guy, I don't know. Stroke play. I mean, it's also just such a wide term. It is. I it mean, is. I'm not sure I understand some, it. There's some players who's extremely good at the net, some is mm. extremely good in the defense flat some is As is very good from the baseline so i, don't I saw really quite a few on these videos from bwf choosing uh, momota actually yeah for for stroke play i i think he's a good choice i mean i i can't i can't pinpoint one sh- one stroke that he's not really good at executing mm. so true i think i would go with kento momota actually good choice intelligence i would go with i would go with um i would go with myself Fair enough. I think that's a good choice. Obviously. Just because I only have two options left, and I yeah. can put myself into in precision. The, in precision, yeah. so I need to put myself in somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Intelligence. I go with myself. Precision. I go with Kento Momota. So you choose him in two categories. Yeah, I do. Yeah. But well, I, that's fair I would also he's also a good player. He's fairly good. So. But it's it's close between Victor and Kento in, in precision. Mm. Yeah. Sure. But I I go with uh, precision. Momota in precision mm. so guys you can do that one too i mean in the comment section if you remember the the six different categories speed athleticism power stroke play intelligence and precision yeah i mean give us give us your opinion on on that should one. we do a quick one that for women singles fun. um yeah we can do that but i think you should do it because i'm not that much in- into the category yeah. i think you well, obviously, stroke play, I already chose Tai Su Ying. Mm-hmm. For power, I think I would no doubt choose Carolina Marin. Mm-hmm. I think she's really, really powerful. Um, Do we have a status on her? Uh, what What's going on with her knee injury? She is coming back, and I think she's quite close to a comeback, actually. But there is a few things going on in Spain where I don't know the exact details, but Fernando Rivas, the mm-hmm. coach of Marin, yep. uh, has resigned from the Spanish uh, okay. national team. Uh, but there's, like, no official news out what he's going to be but he made this Instagram post where he said that he was still going to be the coach of Marin okay Um. so yeah how that's going to work I have no idea or if he's moving abroad with her or what yeah we don't know so that's going to be quite interesting to follow her injury she she, she injured her knee right yeah do you know exactly what what, what it was no uh, I'm not sure if it was an ACL or MCL injury oh. one, one of the two but okay. it was in the other knee than the one she had yeah. already injured once before so it's the exact same injury just uh, on the opposite <sighs> knee I'm not sure no, I'm okay. not 100% sure fair enough but I think she's going to be back soon and she will be my pick for power yeah uh, I think for uh, precision mm, I might go with uh, 
I might go with uh, Rachanok actually in Tanan. Okay. I think she is uh, she's playing with a pretty good precision. Uh, and for speed, uh, I would go with the uh, Yamaguchi because she's simply so small, but yeah. she's covering that call yeah, yeah, uh, insane. <laughs> insanely well, and she's insane. playing at a very high speed. Yeah. Um, athleticism. Probably I would go with her compatriot Okuhara. Mm. Very uh, athletic. I, I haven't in seen her. her in a long time. Yeah, she's also been injured. But okay. She's also coming back. Okay. Uh, How old is she? I think I feel like she has been she's yeah. been around for a long time now. I don't think she's that old actually. Okay. I should know. Have you ever heard about the time I went out for sushi with her? Yeah, I was yeah. about to ask. I know yeah. that you are a little bit like friends yeah. with her. Or? Yeah, I've spoken to her a few times. Okay. I went out for a sushi dinner with her and our Japanese kind of tour guide mm. in Indonesia one year. Our fixer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was... 26. She's 26. 26? Yeah. Only 26? Yeah. She's been wow, there for I, quite I thought, some time. I thought you were much older. Okay, incredible. Um, and intelligence, I think I'll go with Chen Yufei from China. I think, uh, yeah, without knowing it too well, but I, I don't see her as a player that's very flashy. So I don't think she's extremely flashy in either her offense or defense or anything. But she seems like she's very clever in setting up her opponents uh, in the right way tactically. What about An Young? Yeah, she was not in there. I think no, I know she's your favorite. So you can yeah. you can pick one way you can put her in. I would I would say I feel like she's quite intelligent on the court. Mm. Probably, yeah. She, she doesn't... For me to see, she's not, like, the fastest player. She's, mm. It's not like she's playing in a pace like Ma- Marinus. Mm. But um, for her age, especially, she she's like, seems, like, very calm and very collective on... on, on yeah. Yeah, so... Good choice. I think I, will, I would choose her for intelligence. Yeah. But that, so that's okay. That's it. So that's, that's our absolute perfect. optimal... Perfect badminton player. Of the active players. Of the active now, players. Yeah. Maybe yeah, we yeah. would have... So Lin, there's no Lin, disrespect to Lin Dan or Chong Wei. Oh, or maybe anyone, we, we would have them in there somewhere. I mean... Yeah. Yeah. If we could. Let me find a question for you. Yeah. I, I, I saw there was quite at... quite a lot of questions directed to you. Yeah, this that was time. actually quite nice. You're time. getting more yeah. and more popular. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like how it's evolving. Uh, uh, uh. <clears throat> This one is definitely for you. Okay, this one is... Uh, maybe we have talked about it before, but you can just go through it a little bit quickly then, um, if we have. That's right. So it's about that you you are you are an old man. It's it's no secret. You have been, been around for a very long time. So you have played in like two generations now. Yeah. In the Lin Dan Li Chang Wei era, and now a new era is, is going on. <clears throat> so what is like the biggest difference from 10 years back? And now, um, in men's singles, mm. what are some of the the biggest changes that you have felt? I think the biggest change for me is that today you need to be much more complete. Like 15, 10 years ago, it would be more doable to be like an all-out offense kind of guy. You didn't need to be as good in your defense or be as stable in like uh, just like all the basic stuff. Mm. It, of course, you still needed to have a high level, but you, you didn't have to be so yeah stable in terms of your level. Uh, I think today you need to be able to do all the basic stuff at a world-class level. You need to have a world-class defense. Uh, and I think players are also, like it takes longer before players generally open up and start attacking and going for winners. So mm. the, the game is being built up for longer now than it was in the past. I think in the past it was a little bit more, uh, yeah, a little bit shorter rallies, a little bit uh, more explosive in in some ways. And I think that was interesting to see with uh, Lokin Yu at the Worlds. I think he was actually a bit more back to bringing the, it back to the very offensive style. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So I think that for me that that is the biggest difference. It's kind of like when I when I see some of Lin Dan's old matches, mm. he is also extremely aggressive and mm. he's winning so many points in his attack. But when you when you watch him, some of his last matches, he was very calculated, yeah, and playing it around the court for a very long time. Um, not really that much of an uh, offensive mm. player, just more like all round. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> do you think it's because 
the men's singles in general has has better defense than back in the days. So now you can't attack that much because you might get some. I mean, you might hurt yourself even even more and drain your own energy because. Yeah, I think that is why, and the the quality shot quality, especially in the lifting and everything, is also maybe a little bit better. Mm. Uh, yeah. And I don't know for sure, but I also feel like. 10, 15 years ago when I competed, we didn't play with slow shuttles all the time. Yeah. So it was also easier to kill it and put it on the floor okay. uh, than it is now. Now you need the perfect, perfect opportunity to to even try to to go for the winner. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So if you do it in the wrong time now, you will just uh, put yourself in a bad position. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. I have one. I haven't. I haven't read it all the way through, but let's just let's just try <laughs> let's this. Just try it. How to keep high motivation on doing the same thing for a long time, um, and how to face failure or deal with it? That's some situation I met these days. So I just wonder that if you were in these kind of situations, what would you do? Um, so let's just take the first part of the question first. How to keep motivation? How to keep high motivation on doing the same thing for a long time? Mm. Yeah, good well, question yeah but i don't think of it as i'm doing the same thing and i've been doing the same thing for so long because I, i think it's like there's new challenges all the time i know i've played all england before but uh, i still have a dream of winning all england so i for me it's not difficult to stay motivated because i still have that to motivate me every year uh same with the world championships or basically all the other big events i haven't won a lot of them so uh For me, it's not that difficult to really find the motivation. Uh, another thing is that I feel like there's always areas in my game that I can still improve on. Um, yeah. So I, I think it's it's come comes down to the fact that I I just want to improve all the time, and I want to, I'm setting new goals mm. uh, every year. Um, and also, I guess it come come down to the fact that you are doing something that you're really passionate about. Yeah, for sure. You for do sure. something that you are interested in and and you know something you love to do mm. <clears throat> and if you if you if you wake up every single day and have to find some crazy source of motivation then mm. you might not do the right thing for you mm. so <clears throat> i think if, if your everyday lives just you feel like it sucks and you're not inspired in any mm. way and stuff then i just think that you're not doing the right thing yeah. so for me it's it's the same thing for me Um, I hate this question. I mean, I I don't hate it, <laughs> but I've just received it many times. Like, mm. how do you stay motivated? It's mm. just basically because I love to do this, yeah, and I mean, yeah. I'm very ins- inspired by this yeah. sport. I think it's a very interesting game. So, so but that's I, basically it. Yeah. <clears throat> but I understand. Like, of course, some people will also have to be in jobs where you're not necessarily extremely motivated every single day. Mm. Um, but I think actually some of the same would apply to those people that if you set yourself some goals obviously you you do the job because you have to earn money and for a nice holiday or mm. for something you want to buy or just yeah anything basically so i think that that should be the motivation that if you're not directly motivated just from the job you should be motivated from what it can give you in the uh, in the future mm. yeah, that, that's sure. how i would look at it yeah. at least but i also feel like we are extremely i wouldn't say lucky because we have definitely worked our way to get mm. in this position where we are able to live um we are able to make a living mm. of our our passion yeah because for, for sure. us this started out as just a game just mm. a, just our passion yeah. we were just young not thinking about bigger things than mm. um than just yeah, having we are, fun um we are so, very fortunate so we are very very fortunate and and that also makes it more easy for us to maybe stay motivated and passionate mm. and inspired mm than someone having a regular job just mm. because they need to earn money yeah. um so yeah true true what what was the second part of the question uh it how was, to deal yeah. and how to you know face failure mm. or deal with it mm. so how how does it work for you let's say you you set set yourself a goal mm. and then you come up short you don't reach mm. it it's it's a tough tough one to swallow you are sad you are angry everything How do you process that and 
Yeah, I think uh, sports people are probably some of the people who has the most experience in doing that because obviously we Definitely. end most of our tournaments with defeat. Uh, we don't win every single event. Only one guy can win. Uh, so we get to deal with disappointments all the time. Uh, in general, what I do is like if it's a match uh, I lose that I'm very disappointed about, I, I, give, I allow myself to be like sad and annoyed and uh, not thinking positively or uh, cons with any kind of uh, I don't look at it any uh, constructive way no. uh, for one day <laughs> and then I need to like the next day I need to try and start thinking positively and look ahead um, but I, I have that rule that that on the day it happens and the yeah the next 24 hours I can I can okay. be as annoyed as I want to and okay. it, it's working quite well for me because uh, for me, it's quite unrealistic to just start thinking positively straight away. Mm. Uh, and I think the like the anger and the disappointment is also part of the fuel uh, to to the challenges that are that are coming up ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you have like a twenty four hour rule. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Are you able to like? It's not like I'm timing it on the no. minutes. But you are yeah. not able to drop the. I mean, the disappointment completely after 24 hours, you're, of course, you're still no, carry, of course carried it's, on for Of course, minutes. it's still there. And like, long time. as we're sitting here, there's still things mm. from last year. I'm disappointed about like the Thomas Cup, for example. I'm not going to drop that. And when we go to Thomas Cup again this year, it's going to work as part of the fuel towards trying to win the gold there. Um, but it's more like my mindset now is not thinking about the disappointment. I'm thinking ahead what I need to work on and yeah, yeah the goal setting now. Whereas in the first 24 hours, I'm not thinking like that. I'm more kind of beating myself or uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, being a bit harsh. <sighs> Makes sense. Yeah. What about you? Cool. Um. Um. I feel like. I've also had some tough defeats <laughs> uh, last year. I mean, I had, I mean, sure. I had three big goals last year, and all of them, uh, I I came up short. I failed just before it got really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, the Olympics, uh, I lost in the quarterfinal just before the medals. Mm -hmm. um, then, then Thomas Cup was a big goal for me on on my own home soil uh, where I grew up. Um, and we lost in the semi-final uh, and I lost a crucial, crucial match, mm. very important one for the team. That one was extremely tough to swallow as well. Mm. And then I went on to the World Championships, my third big goal this year, and I lost in the semi-final, very close again mm. uh, against the Loki New. So I have, I have, um, I have dealt, dealt, mm. dealt, yeah. I've dealt with some tough, tough defeats this year, mm. <laughs> really tough defeats. Um, and it's been it's been heartbreaking at times, but I feel like for every every time that I that I get one of these extremely tough um, defeats, I become I come out a little bit later, like I mean, a much more motivated version of myself mm. um, every time. And I mean, there's 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 times where I feel like just in the moment, just as you said, I'm so down, and I can't really see a way out of it mm. but as times goes on just a few days maybe sometimes only a few hours i already start to plan i mean mm. how am i going to get better how am i going to learn from this uh, experience and um and yeah i mean for me Do i'm also just very very i mean interested in in the journey of getting better and mm. getting back from defeats and stuff mm. um so yeah, I th I think I I realized that there's there's nothing that's going to I mean stop my motivation. Mm. I mean it's it's only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And for every every season that passes on, I'm getting um, more extreme in my approach and mm. more dedicated to the sport. So <clears throat> that's how my mindset works. Mm. Is that these defeats is just adding extra fuel. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I I don't think probably won't come natural to to a lot of people i guess some people can get so down that they're they are, can't get back up from mm. it or something yeah but yeah for me it actually works the opposite way yeah so do you think it would it would be tougher for you to actually keep your motivation if you just won all the time <laughs> it depends on your on your pettiness mm. if you just want 
everything. I mean, mm. some 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 people is extremely driven, mm. and their ego is very big, so they just want it yeah. all. Um, I is don't that- I don't know. For me, I mean, I'll I'll have to try it first. Um, but I don't I I I don't think that I could get. I mean. Um, I don't think I could get enough of winning. Okay. Yeah. So. so I've thought about it many times with the like guys like Lin Dan and Lee Chung Wei, especially that it's to me it's so impressive that they've been able to keep the motivation high for so long. Because I know for me, I don't think I would be able to do that actually. If they won, if I had won half as much as what they have won, I don't think I would be motivated to do the work needed uh, to keep going. Um, but yeah, I understand that we work in different ways. Uh, in terms of that but like I, it, if i won the olympics i don't i don't think i would be extremely motivated to try and do it again no but yeah no it course. depends on I, the on the on the individual um yeah yeah may, maybe maybe you still want it but i mean if you just lose like one two percent yeah exactly of that extreme hunger mm. um then it won't be enough. Then it won't be enough yeah. anymore because yeah. there are so many guys out there mm. there that is putting in those mm. extra percents. Yeah. And and for sure. Then they're going to to run you over. Mm. So. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to look for good a good question. one. Here good is question. one from Vinu. What's your favorite cheese? I think we're just gonna skip that <laughs> one unless you have a favorite cheese. <laughs> mm. This is not a question for the Bampton experience. No, Sorry guys. No. No. Um. Ba- 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 um. Uh, this one we already been over a little bit. The most painful defeats. I'm guessing your answer would be one of the three you just mentioned. Um, mm-hmm. And we can uh, just fast forward in this one, Oliver. <laughs> Need to find a good one. Um, Looking, 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 looking. There, 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 there okay. is, there is a guy asking for from some serious help here. He's um, okay. He's confused. Okay. He says, <laughs> "I want to ask a problem in my badminton. I mean, mm-hmm. in his badminton." play in his game right um what to do when there is no progress in the game and the other teammates are at boost but mm. my game not going up mm. what to do to boost my game and myself is this situation something that has occurred in your life mm. your favorite badminton fan nice so, where is he from he's from india okay. there's an indian flag uh, yeah then After he is probably message. from India. Well, I would say first of all that it would be a good idea to talk to someone uh, like a coach or even if you're very close with one of your fellow uh, teammates, ask yeah. them for uh, advice or just have it like a general chat about uh, your game and uh, your training and yeah, everything about your your, your game. Mm. I, I think that's a good place to find some uh, inspiration on what to work on and how to how to move ahead. Uh, I have done it a few times where I've actually twice been quite close of quitting the national team in Denmark and both being like kicked out, but also uh, where I was close of choosing it myself that I was going to stop. Uh, and I uh, I took a long chat with uh, my club coach at the time, uh, talking to him about uh, if this was the right choice. And uh, I felt like I was not really developing in, in any way. Uh, and he, he really helped me see that there were still things I could do also while I was in the national center uh, to to improve. So for me, that, that worked really well. Uh, mm. So yeah. talk to someone, definitely. Talk to someone, yeah. Definitely a good idea. I I feel like another thing that's that I think is really important that you can get into this rhythm of just going to practice and then just, you know, do well at practice Mm. But don't really be very, very specific specific in what you are doing. Mm. Um, I I get into that sometimes, just just showing up to practice, just doing mm. a good job. But it's not like really, really quality, mm. and it's it's not really specific. So I think that's that's a good way 
to develop yourself is to always have goals that you want to achieve um both results and also just um it could be like in every technical. single training yeah in every yeah. single training yeah. it could be technical stuff and mm. um so be specific when you train mm. uh, just not just show up and then suddenly all the other guys is much better than you mm. and you wonder why i'm not i'm not catching up with them mm. um so have yeah. focus on on developing every single training mm. and be specific in what you are doing mm think that that's that's an important one yeah and that that way <clears throat> i think you would also take more responsibility of like your own game and your own development right instead of just showing up as you say and just do whatever the coach mm. is, is saying and i think that you are going to develop faster if you really put your mind to whatever you're doing mm. if you if you analyze what you're doing and why you are doing it um mm. then you can track your progress much easier yeah than and if you're, I'm just showing up, doing some some exercise two against one, not mm. really thinking about it, just doing it. Mm. Then you don't move to that next level mm. uh, as fast. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. So yeah, be specific and, uh, quali- and talk to someone. Quality, and of course, always get some feedback. Yeah. Talk to talk to coaches. Make a plan together with mm. with your coach and yeah, and take it from there. Another one, which is uh, asked by a couple of guys, is simply, what are your targets for uh, this upcoming year? So, like, what is, if you can just <clears> take <throat> the maybe two top targets you have for this season? If you can I narrow think it for, down for to me, two. For me, it's, it's always about the biggest tournaments. Yeah. It's, it, it, would, it will always be about the World Championships, the Olympics, and the, the Super Thousand tournaments, mm-hmm. like All England, Indonesia Open. China also used to have one. I don't know right now with COVID and stuff. It's still on the calendar, okay. but yeah, we'll see. Okay, but that's for me the most. That's what um, in intrigue. Yeah, most intriguing. That's most intriguing uh, oh. for me. So, oh. um, but obviously, I want to to try to win every tournament that I enter. Mm. But the biggest tournament is the one with the ones with the most prestige. So yeah. for me, that's the uh, I think, Thomas Cup too, of yeah, course. Yeah. Playing for your country in a team event is, is also very but I'm special. sure for you, the first one coming up is All England, right? That is going to be England the first big goal. In like, it's That's not, in that, March. Not, yeah. not that far away in mm. March. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. great, great tournament. Yeah. I reached the semi final the last two years. So, mm. I would like to take yeah. it a step further. Yeah, for me, yeah, it's. It's actually also still the big ones, even though it's not like I've uh, won a lot of huge tournaments or, or medals. But it's still those events that are kind of uh, igniting my fire, if you can say it that way. Mm. Uh, but I I just recently had a meeting with uh, with our coach Kenneth, uh, talking about this as well. And this may sound wrong in some way, but this is actually also the first time where I felt like the European Championships is is actually quite uh, motivating for me. Mm. Um, I really would like to win a medal again, um, to have three medals. Uh, I think that would just be, for some reason, I, I think that would be pretty cool if I had won three uh, separate uh, European Championship medals. And uh, it might, again, sound a little bit wrong, but the, the European Championships doesn't have this kind of high esteem in Denmark like it has in some of the other European countries, right? Because we, we more measure us towards the, the world level. Mm. Um, but I just, I for me, it feels a little bit different this time. So it is actually a huge goal for me this year to uh, to win another medal. When is it and uh, where is it? Yeah, it's in uh, April, uh, but no one knows where it is because okay. Finland was supposed to host the European men's and women's team championships in February, and also the individual European championships in April. But they said they cannot host the team event because of COVID, um, and it was done as like a package solution. So they also lost the the individual championships. So right now, Badminton Europe is uh, working on finding a solution. But I know Denmark has said that if nothing else uh, succeeds, they they will host it. So uh, maybe on home soil. Yeah, but I think Badminton Denmark is hoping it will be somewhere else. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, interesting. What is your best uh, achievement at at the European Championships? I've only won bronze twice. Okay. Yeah. In uh, Culling in 17, I missed a match point in the semi-final against Rajiv Usef. Yeah, and that cost you a gold. 
because I lost the final yeah. to Rajiv yeah. too, and I would have beaten you if, if probably if that yeah. was the probably. the final. Yeah, actually, I'm not so sure at that time. No, I I'm think not, I would have had I'm a good not chance. Sure either. But I had a good tournament. I had a really good yeah. tournament. Yeah, because who did you beat in the semifinals? Uh, Victor. I beat yeah. Victor in the semifinal, but I also beat it, uh, Scott Evans, our good Irish friend. Yeah. And I beat it, uh, Max Wiebler okay. from Germany. That's good. And Ito Heino, yeah, from Finland, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. That, that was it's, the match against Ito Heino from, from Finland mm. uh, was the on my 20th, 20th birthday. It was 20, right? Or was it 19? In 17. So when are you born? It was in sense. It was twenty. Yeah, it was twenty. Okay. My twentieth birthday, yeah. and we were on a restaurant eating before the match. I think we actually have a vlog from this uh, tournament okay. back in the days before Oliver was uh, recording. Um, and we were on this restaurant a few hours before the match. Mm. I think it was the second round. Um, and I was ordering some kind of pasta and stuff, mm. but for some reason they couldn't make it, so they they could only make pizza for us. So I was eating a pizza just a few hours before before the match, and my stomach was hurting so much throughout the whole match. And I think I won it in three games. Okay, I was yeah. really close yeah. to to losing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. just uh, yeah. You didn't have a pizza again afterwards to celebrate. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I got a big cake from the tournament. Yeah. I remember. I didn't. Eat Itu it. was also a good player, actually. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. definitely. Uh, this one I actually saw when I, I was just looking uh, through the questions last night before I went to bed, and th- this one I actually uh, I was looking forward to ask you. Um, it, it's like uh, it's two questions in one, but uh, this guy is asking which Danish legend do you look up to? Like which of your compatriots inspired you the most? Hmm. And you can't say me. I can't. No, no, you can't. Oh. Because everyone knows that's the obvious. <laughs> the you also I need to be. You always need to be a little surprising. I think it would be either Victor or Jan. Yeah. yeah. So, of course, I was. I am also inspired by Peter Gell. Mm. Um But I think I have learned a lot from practicing together with Victor and Jan for mm. for for quite a while um yeah you never really had a chance to practice with peter right no oh. no i i played with peter a few times when i was like 16 years old i mean mm. once he visited my my town in aarhus mm. when i was still living at my parents place and he has a good relation with my coach back then okay so he set up a match between me and him just we were the only two in the hall just me and peter just okay. just just playing i think i have it I have it on my maybe on my father's laptop or something. Okay. So it's that quite needs fun. to go up on the channel. Yeah, I, I, we can definitely find it. Yeah. I mean, I was playing really good up until eleven in the first game, mm. and then I had no legs. Yeah. I mean, so. Uh, but that's such a classic against Gator. <laughs> I was training with him for so many years uh, in the national center as well, and you always would feel like up until around eleven, twelve, thirteen, you you felt like you were in the match. Mm. And then all of a sudden, like his consistency, uh, like everything would just work in his favor. And I would start making a few mistakes here and mm. there. And he just didn't do those mistakes. Like okay. he just kept on going. And it was like he figured you out slowly. Um, yeah. yeah. I've, I've had that feeling really a lot of times. And we were always so annoyed, me and also Jan, actually, at the time where we started that. Even when we felt like we played our best, it would often be like, okay, then you're up 11-10. So, okay. so you, you didn't really yeah, build yeah. up that uh, yeah that lead no. to uh, to really believe you could beat him. He w- he was a master in training okay. for sure. I would have loved to 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 train with him, mm. but um, yeah. yeah, I was too young. Mm. But the problem for me back then was also I couldn't keep up with the pace. I mean, I was mm. yeah. I guess sixteen years old. So it's after just ten five ten minutes playing at his pace, even mm. though he was retired mm. at that time, um, yeah, I wasn't able to keep up the pace. Mm. Also played him in a show match once in in Aarhus mm. when I was a little bit older. I think I was maybe like seventeen. Just started to to be like good, very mm. good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we played best out of five, and I won the first two to sets. 11. Yeah, best yeah. out of five to eleven. I won the first two sets. 
and then it became a little weird because there were many people in in the crowd yeah. and i and i and i don't want to make excuses for my loss <laughs> because i lost <laughs> um but i was asking my coach what do i do here i yeah. won the first two sets um quite fast yeah. and i mean there was like 500 people around the call right now <laughs> should i just finish it now or what do you do it maybe take a little bit slow on this one yeah. and then try to catch up again yeah. in the fourth yeah <laughs> so I, I took it a little bit slowly in, in the third <laughs> i ended up losing that one took it a little bit slowly in the fourth too lost that mm. one and then i was really eager to get back up yeah. in the fifth but i couldn't <laughs> and he was just playing better and better and better and i was yeah. just getting worse and worse so I ended up losing and i'm so pissed to this day that yeah. i didn't win that match of course of course <clears throat> because he would never believe my excuse for, yeah. for losing which yeah. makes sense we but can ask him about it at some point yeah yeah we will for sure maybe we will soon. for sure it actually it reminds me of a uh, <laughs> like an ex exhibition match i played once for my old club uh, tss where we had to play uh, lang hoy which is uh yeah, yeah far away in, in jutland in denmark uh <laughs> We went there, and uh, I was uh, I was gonna play Milan Ludic from mm. uh, Czech Republic, and uh, without like uh, saying anything bad about Milan at the time, I was at a much higher level than him, uh, and this club had paid for our team to go there and play this match. So we were talking about before the match, me and my coach, that uh, I should take it a little bit easy and just to get a good match going. And as soon as we started, I just, I had no chance. Like he had a huge <laughs> mass and like every time I lifted, he just smashed it on the floor. So I lost the first game and we talked about like, w what are we going to do? And I was like, I, I can't do anything. I didn't feel like I could see the shuttle. And of course I ended up losing in straight games. So uh, yeah. that was bad. It's not the only exhibition match I've lost. I've also lost to Casper Dines in the ones. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. You guys don't know him, no. but we do. Okay, he, he's a coach in my curing club now. Yeah. I actually have another good exhibition uh, okay. story, uh, Come with inclu it. which includes Peter Gade. We went to Sweden one year to play an exhibition event with me, Gade, Henry Huskainen, uh, and Matthias Borg, a young Swedish guy. And it was uh, like semi-final between uh, me and Henry, and a semi-final between Gade and uh, Matthias. And mm -hmm. then the winners should play each other. And obviously, me and Gade, we uh, we were paid pretty well to to go there. Uh, and then we started off with Matthias Ball actually beating Gade in that <laughs> semifinal. And, and Matthias was like 19 and like, it, it was so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like one point f away from losing to Henry in the other semifinal, but then won it, yeah. made the final against Matthias, and then ended up losing to him <laughs> as well. And it was like in his hometown club and he was just there for the experience. And like, he ended up winning, beating Gata and me. We only played, I think, sets to 11 or something like that. Okay. So it yeah. was, made it a little bit easier, but yeah. Fair. We didn't it's just when, when, when it's expected that you are just going to win mm. this one because yeah. it's an exhibition and yeah. you are maybe the star of the show. Exactly. Um, yeah. <laughs> then it can become really difficult. We didn't feel so proud of ourselves afterwards no. uh, being paid well and then go up and lose to a young Swedish guy we, we, did, we barely knew at the time. Where was it? It was in uh, Majestad, it's called. It's the, the hometown of Matthias. It was okay. his dad, actually, who arranged everything. Okay. Uh, it was quite nice, quite a nice event, but yeah. Because I remember facing Matthias Ball mm. in, in in Swedish Open. Yeah, yeah. And it was in Uppsala, I think. Yeah, yeah. And there was a wild cr crowd mm. cheering for him. So I thought that that was maybe his hometown or... Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe that's close to. I, yeah, I'm not no. that good in the no. the geographics of. Uh, but back Sweden. to the, I mean, to the actual question. I would say Victor and Jan. Yeah. Because I've been so close with them, mm. I've been able to to talk a lot with them, especially with Jan. Mm. Um, and Victor is more just from watching his practice, how, how he practices and how he conducts himself, just in his everyday life, ex mm. extreme in every way. I would say yeah. so. Yeah. yeah, those two. Cool. It's about preparation before a match. <laughs> what do you do? I have it here. Um, hey, Anas, I enjoyed your videos Thank and you so podcast for a while now. Thank you so much. My question for you is what do you do to mentally prepare yourself for a match, especially when you are feeling pressured? Yeah. So what do you do? <laughs> And then the, the the last part of the question is about dealing with defeats and stuff. But we, yeah, also we already, already covered already that one. Yeah, talked about that. Also, so Hans, 
um, there is imagine that there is one hour before your match what are you doing <laughs> one hour before the match <laughs> well one hour before the match I'm already in the uh, in the stadium where we are playing uh, yeah. and I would uh, go to the warm up area <laughs> and uh, that's it <laughs> <laughs> no, I would go there uh, and uh, I don't start my warm up until like maybe 30 minutes before. So I have like half an hour there where I try to. Oh, that's not a lot. No, that's not. I, I would usually warm up like 45 minutes at least, maybe yeah. one hour. Well, I get so, and this is honestly, I get so bored when I warm up. <laughs> so I don't, I don't want to do it too much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I usually have half an hour there where I just try to go over the. Uh, the tactics that I've uh, the the plan I've made for my tactics with usually with my coach right uh, and I always try to have three things that I focus mostly on and I I just use that half an hour to focus at a uh, tune in as much as possible uh, to those uh, focus areas. Okay. Um, so while you do your warm up, you you think about those three key. Uh, that that that's before I do. Oh, that's my warm before up. the yeah, warm up. When I actually okay. do my warm up on court, I, I try not to think too much about the match. Actually, okay. I, I try just to, yeah. It sounds so cliche, but be in the like the present and mm. just just do the warm up and uh, okay. focus on having a bit of fun or. So the way not the to shots. get too tense. Or yeah, it is. It is because I also I also <laughs> have a mind that works in the way where I think a lot about uh, consequences all the time. So okay. I, I get tangled up in a lot of thoughts about that. If I think, oh, what if I win? What if I lose? What if I play bad? What would that mean? And stuff like that. So I try not to think too much about that right before I go on court. Makes sense. Yeah. Do you listen to music? I do never do that, no. actually. You're not uh, a big fan of music, right? No, I'm not a big music guy. Mm. Like, it's not that I don't like music, but I just, I don't really use it a lot. Uh, That's weird to me. Yeah. I, I listen I to music all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I get really, really inspired. I mean, you also use it in your build-up, right? Yeah, I so do. Much, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like when I'm starting to pack my stuff back home on the hotel before mm. I uh, leave to the hall. Mm. Then while I do that, while I take my shower and pack all my stuff to the back, I start to to put on some, I mean, some some rap music, mm. some something that hypes me up a little bit and gets yeah. gets me excited and get this feeling of you know confidence and stuff. Um, and then I basically listen to that kind of music all mm. the way up until the match. Mm. Not when I'm warming up on the court, I, I take the earpods out. But whenever I have like two minutes, if I go to the bathroom during mm. my warm up or just go to watch a few rallies in the hall, I always mm. um, plug in my earpods again um, and uh, listen to music. It just mm. puts me in the right mood. So that's yeah. one of my big things um, yeah. Yeah. leading up to the match to to get myself in the right mental space <clears throat> is to listen to music mm. i tried many times to 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 use it but i've never really found it uh work for me and get into any kind of rhythm uh, doing no. it yeah because i know there's a lot of athletes who do it but yeah yeah it's just not for me fair enough well let that be the last question of this uh, q and a episode did we get like five six questions a little bit more maybe a few more i think a few more yeah um good questions um so thank you very much guys for for commenting with your questions and um giving us something to talk about and discuss is uh, it's been a pleasure as always and um yeah that's it i yeah. go to training now you go to the gym yeah that's correct and then i go pick up my son and then we're gonna go to like a uh, like a, a huge play indoor playground area that sounds amazing Ooh. can i join yeah you can you can leo's lila go great there. <laughs> we'll go there in, in, in a few hours guys yeah thank you so much for watching make sure to subscribe to the channel leave a like on the video leave a comment and also some of the stuff that we talked about give us your perspective and uh, that's it see you next week hopefully for another episode of the bampton experience bye bye Cheers. guys